hopped off the train, ran as fast as I could, barged into my office door and without even saying hello to my lab mates, picked up the phone and dialed into the conference line. Hello? Hello, this is David. On the other end of the line was a journalist who had been asked to write about my story, to write about what motivated me to get into science and why I choose to study what I was currently studying today. Pretty much the kind of questions you get asked on the first date. <laughs> I've been on a couple of first dates before and had a couple of these kinds of interviews and I practically knew the answer to this question way before it was asked. But not this time. And when the journalist said, David, you grew up in Sierra Leone during the Civil War. Tell me about your childhood. <coughs> I murmured some words like, I mean, I, I could talk about my childhood and like I, I, can, I can talk about the war. And yes, yes, he quickly interrupted. You grew up in Sierra Leone, right? And you were there between 91 and 2002 when the war ended. Yeah, so tell me about your childhood. This question is the kind of question I've been asked ever since I left home as a teenager to study in Norway for two years. And then when I came to Cambridge to do my undergrad in engineering at Harvard and now at MIT. But this was the first time that I couldn't find an answer especially when his second question was, you're currently studying at MIT doing your PhD in prosthetic socket design. Tell me how the war informed what you're currently studying today. It was at this moment that I realized that it was never my story, but rather it was the story of whoever was writing the next article, whoever had given me the next fellowship or the next award. It was their way of telling the world what they thought my experience of the world was. And when I thought about it, what they were really asking me could have been this. David, we want to tell the world that you grew up in Sierra Leone and possibly had a traumatic life experience and you made it out to the United States of America and luckily are studying at MIT to develop prosthesis to send back to poor people in your country. Thanks to MIT and thanks to the United States of America. We want you to say yes, could you please do that? <laughs> In the past, I simply would have said yes and moved on to more interesting questions. But not today, not this time. Because, you see, my childhood was not that simple. I was a child who would play endless hours of football in the rain. And at the end of a football match, put bandages on my bruises, dress up, and go and shadow my uncle who was doing surgeries in Sierra Leone because I wanted to be a doctor and I would meticulously learn all the layers of the skin as he opened up the human body. I still tell my mom that I would be a doctor, just not the kind that she thought I would. <laughs> I was a kid who played games, from board games, Scrabble, chess, drafts, checkers, to TV games, PlayStation, Sega, Formula One car racing, you name it. Because with my friend Samzu, we lived by the motto, work hard, play hard. I was a kid who took many hours of private lessons to complement my public school education because I needed it. And more importantly, I loved getting the prize in physics in school because I was inspired by my dad who thought maths and physics in the early years of his career. I was also the kid who at 10 would write my own rap lyrics and join my brother and his colleagues to go and live battle in clubs. I don't think my parents quite knew that I came back home at 3 a.m. at 10. <laughs> I was the kid 
who asked so many questions that one of my uncles literally banned me from being in the vicinity of where he was telling the story. Because he knew that the minute I started, I would never end. It was that curiosity that got me to the path of science. Because in one of those conversations where I was talking to people who were older than I was, they said, the reason why the amputees who are sitting by the roadside in Freetown were not using their prosthesis was because they just wanted to beg. They got the prosthesis for free, why weren't they using them? I was not satisfied with this answer, so I went and had conversations with these amputees. And there I learned that the reason why they did not use their prosthesis was because they were uncomfortable. They had pressure sores, they had blisters, because their limbs were ever-changing. And so, when I learned, many years later, as I was about to begin doing my PhD at MIT, from my current advisor, Professor Hugh Herr, who himself is a double amputee, that that problem was not just for people in Sierra Leone. He himself, a tenured MIT professor, described the same pain as was described to me by people in Sierra Leone. He's perhaps the smartest biomechatronics engineer I know. He wears bionic ankles and yet gets pressure sores and blisters. So I joined his research group because this was an interesting problem to solve that had a global significance and was locally relevant to Sierra Leone. For my research, I used medical imaging and MRI to capture the, both the outside and internal surfaces of the residual limb, the part that is still attached to the human body after it's, the leg has been amputated. We build these models that are then validated using robotic tools that some of my colleagues have built at the lab, and then I develop and design these 3D printed multi-material prosthetic sockets that are much more comfortable for the body. I do this because we are curious to try to understand how you connect the human body to machines comfortably. Now, if this were a story that was being told by one of those journalists, the headline would read like this. MIT student from war-torn African country invents 3D printed prosthesis for the poor. <laughs> While any one of those words, or a couple of those words could be true, they are not my own truth. Because what gets me to work every day is to think about how we can better connect the body to prosthesis. Think about it or just any interface, your shoes still give you blisters. So if there's any one thing that I want you to take away from this story, it is that my curiosity and my interest in science started in surgical rooms in Sierra Leone and from football fields where I was playing in the rain, not while I was running away from bullets. I have since had a couple other interviews, and the journalist who was interviewing me more recently said, look, uh, David, I know you don't want to talk about your experiences in the war and how it relates to what you're working on. I said, yeah, I don't want to, because I want us to focus on the research that we're, that's currently going. He asked the same question a couple of times, and I chose to not focus on what he wanted to focus on. At the end, he said something like, you know what off the record means, right? I said, yeah, all right, sure. I said, well, tell me off the record. Why don't you want to focus your story on the wall? Because I will hate to look so foolish for not mentioning something so important, he said. They say, only gods and fools don't change. 
I am no God, and I pray that he's no fool, but I insist. This is my story, and this is how I want it told. Thank you.